They put you in prison for that here, but it's really not that bad. Because in our religion, if you are willing to die for Allah, you can do that stuff. Well, go figure. Again, when you look at prison populations, they're not doctors, lawyers, and physicists. They're a lower educated strata of society. They tend to believe these things that kind of make them feel good and justify what they believe was a normal thing, raping an eight-year-old boy. So there is an active movement within those populations in prison for these guys. They see it as, and honest, this is not me talking. This is actually going on. It's going on right this second. There is an organized movement by certain communities, and we're going to talk about the Muslim Brotherhood in a minute, and I'll tell you this right now, they are a terrorist organization. No matter what you read or hear from the mainstream media, they are a terrorist organization, and I'll talk about that in a second. But the Muslim Brotherhood set up all of these organizations, including CARE, and all of these ones that are the benign faces of the, of the Islamic communities, and they are actively, they have a, they have a playbook, and if you have ever get a chance to read it, uh, it was published, uh, I believe, in 1968 or something like that. It's a 100-year plan for the takeover of Western uh, civilization. And all of these organizations that are out there, CARE and the North American Islamic uh, Relations and all this and that, they all tie back to the Muslim Brotherhood. So, who's a terrorist? Could be anybody. They don't have a look right now. By God, there's one. <laughs> Not looking too good when they pull him out of that rat hole and get his lullaby. <coughs> Definitely fits a profile if I'm looking at people. Number one looks kind of goofy. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. There's a nice looking young guy. You know, we're a bomber. You could sit next to him on a plane and have no clue. Nice looking young kid, looks like he might play sports. Got a couple of Nike things on there. That's cool. Oh, wait a minute. Same guy. McCollum. When he was in Somalia, we'll talk about Somalia a little bit too. Oh, there's a nice looking guy. Dan wears the uniform of the United States of America. And that, that is a that's a crime. There should be a lot of people with their heads on a stick as a result of what that is able to do. Because by God, these mother efforts that were scared of hurting their career for not reporting this guy was a goofball, kook and weirdo, going off on some radical Islamic uh, uh, philosophy. They should be the ones. <laughs> I haven't had lunch yet. I couldn't pass it up, honestly. And I don't really give a damn about her. She probably didn't get involved. Every threat that we face right now boils down really to Muslim terrorism. And again, it's not every single Muslim, but the terrorists that we face as a result of the world current situation, and this is determined by every intelligence agency that we have. And all the intelligence agencies of our allies, Muslim terrorism is the number one threat. They're the ones who are going to be able to do the most harm. They're the ones most likely to do harm against the United States. Talk about that with some charts and things in a moment too. Who knows who that guy is? Abdul Rolf. Ground Zero Moss. Ground Zero Moss. Real nice guy. Talks about peace. Gives lectures on you know the fact that we should work with our 
Muslim brothers and Christian brothers to come together somewhere in the middle to have peace between our cultures. Without getting too deep into it, you do know that every time the Islamic uh, jihadists have conquered another country or taken over a city or done something that was a, considered a victory, they build a mosque to commemorate it. And they usually build it over the most holy site of the enemy, Temple Mount. Several places in India that they took over, they built a mosque on top of it, so now it's a sacred ground to them. <clears throat> I'd say that was a victory mosque this guy was trying to do. Now, people say that's bullshit. This guy just wants to bring in a, a mosque so that there's Muslims can have their place of worship. Well, let's just take a little look here. This is his most recent book. What's right with Islam? Okay? Well, that, that looks like something I should probably read. Because I've got a real jaded opinion, obviously. Maybe I should read his book and see what is right with Islam. He's, he's reaching out. That's the English version. You can buy it off Amazon. Or you can buy this book. The same exact book published in the Arab world. The name of it is A Call to Prayer from the World Trade Center of Rubble, Islamic Dawah in the Heart of America post 9 11. Who knows what Dawah is? So what Dawah is, is a call to Muslims to go out and convert non Muslims to the religion of Islam. from the rubble of the World Trade Center. He really didn't want that on ABC News, and they didn't put it on ABC News. <coughs> know your enemy. That's what I'm trying to do a little bit of today. You gotta go out and make your own search. You gotta verify whether I'm full of shit or if there's some truth to what I'm saying, okay? I don't expect you to take what I'm saying as gospel. I do have a jaded opinion. It's based on my research, my interface with what's actually taking place in the world. Okay? But I expect you to go out and see what I'm talking about. Learn his motivation. Learn his methodologies, tactics, strategies. Learn his lies. Learn his truths. They've never been bashful about telling us what they want to do. Okay? Those are the truths. Know the weapons, guns, bombs, fire, biological, etc., etc., any and all means that they can. When I talk about the lies, though, I want to say this. When an when a Islamic Iman says, we want peace and we want freedom, you have to understand, we, we view everything through our Western eyes. Peace and freedom here in the United States means I'm not being threatened by anybody. That's peace. And freedom, and freedom means I can kind of do what I want as long as I stay within the rules of society. I can go start a business. I can go out and uh, walk around in the woods. I can go deer hunting. I can go fishing. I can go work out. I can have four or five kids. I can go to Las Vegas and gamble. Whatever I want to do, though, as long as I'm not threatening the, the safety of other people, that's kind of freedom. You know, you're, we're here, we can make all our own decisions. Nobody's forcing anything down our throat. Freedom to, in the Islamic world really is defined as the freedom to have Sharia law. So when they give these speeches and say, well, we're, we want freedom too, the trouble with it is everybody runs with it and says, oh my gosh, they want freedom just like we do. Well, their definition of freedom is a little different. The freedom to worship Muhammad means the freedom to have Sharia law. That's a fact. And I'm not going to get into everything that Sharia law is, but I will tell you this. The difference between Christianity, if you will, or, Ju or uh, Judaism and Islam is that Islam governs every aspect of your life. It governs, it governs banking. It governs what you eat. It governs what you do during the day. It governs finance, it governs religion, it governs what you're able to talk about, it governs your, it governs your sexual 
activities. I mean, it is, it's all encompassing. It is not a religion. It is a way of life. It has a religious undercurrent, if you will. So you have to understand, when I say know your enemy, you should learn about this stuff. Because by God, you're not going to get it on ABC, CBS, and NBC. <coughs> Now, as a, an operator, you reach a point where if you start thinking like a terrorist, you have just crossed over into that awareness that I'm talking about, okay? When I go places, and, and I'm gonna ask you, I know, it's, I know it's happening, because I have this conversation with so many people. Damn, I was standing in line, and I, and I was thinking, damn, the security here is not good. If I was a terrorist, all I'd have to do is, has anyone in here ever had that thought? Okay, that's a good thing. Because you know what? That is that first level of awareness that we're talking about. If you start thinking about that, guess what, guess what that means you're doing? <coughs> you're looking around. You're becoming aware. You're already doing it. Because guess what? They're just like us. They're as smart as we are when it comes to this stuff. They look at these things too and say, you know what? Hmm. That's a soft target right there. That's a spot where we can hit. Okay? Believe me, and they're out there. Uh, I can tell you stories about, you know, all these things about the, the 12 Emons, or not the 12 Emons, the, the Emons in Minneapolis that were going to get on the plane and all that. That's, oh, the poor guys were just praying bullshit. I know the inside story and all that. Okay? They were testing what it takes to activate our system, to bring our air marshals and that out, okay? It's part of the whole thing. What is it going to take to activate a response? And it's ongoing. And none of it ever makes the news. <clears throat> weapons. One of the things that you have to understand is you are the weapon. You are the weapon. You are never unarmed. If you are alive and awake, you are never unarmed. Again, a lot of people think in terms of, well, I don't have to have, always have a gun with me, etc. Uh, you know what? That's just a means, okay? You are the weapon. You have to understand that. And that's part of when, when I give seminars on hand-to-hand -hand and all that <coughs> stuff, I always have to tell people, look, you can't become weapons dependent, okay? You are the weapon. If I have to use my bare hands to gouge someone's eyes out, I'm not unarmed. <coughs> If I have to bash somebody in the head with a brick or a chair that I pick up because he's starting to spray fire around at a mall, I'm not unarmed. I just don't have a gun, that's all. You have to think about that. You are never, ever unarmed, ever. Fortunately, there appears an arm. You are never unarmed. There you go. Now, my recommendations where you start to get proactive is I'm a gun guy. <clears throat> get a gun. Learn how to use it. Get a rifle. Get a shotgun. Okay? Have it in your house. Okay? We're responsible adults. We know all about safety. We know all about preventing children from that, having access to our weapons. But by God, you need to have a gun. Okay? And I can testify personally that you do need to have a gun. Because I've had it happen. All right? It helps a lot, especially if you're up against another gun. Get a concealed carry permit, one way or the other. I don't believe in just having my gun sitting at my house. I have a gun wherever I go, okay? Because I don't get to pick when something's going to happen. Wherever I am, I have access to fire, okay? Get a concealed carry permit. Become a reserve officer, whatever it takes. I'm not going to advocate breaking the law. I don't want anybody going to jail. You should be armed, okay? And the other thing that I will put in here just as an aside is we need to fight for the right to be able to keep our guns <coughs> and to carry our guns. Training how to use that weapon. And that does not mean going 